If this spot looks familiar, it's because I did a video from this exact spot last July, and I did a video about building your own house in 2020. And in this video, we're gonna go over all the things that went right and all the things that went wrong, and there were a lot of them, and hopefully it'll help you if you're thinking about building your own house. So if you haven't watched the video that we did last July, I will put it up above, so click that first and, and check that out before you watch this one. It'll be a good before and after. And in this video, like I said, we're gonna go over all the things that worked out and all the things that went wrong. And I'm about to introduce you to the homeowner, Andy, and he's gonna explain what he would do differently and everything that uh, he likes and didn't like about the building process. And hopefully it'll help everybody out that's thinking about building on their own. Hi, I'm Andy. My wife and I just finished building this house on the bench of the mountains outside of Whitefish in Columbia Falls. And first thing we're going to talk about is getting water, specifically drilling a well. When you're uh, building your Rocky Mountain Dream out of the city, you got to realize there's no municipal water line running by your property. You got to dig down and find your water in a well. And that was our first attempt. Uh, unfortunately, we had to drill two, and the first one wasn't free. So even though we had a great well drilling company that we were very happy with, uh, and we did in fact locate a vein at about 300, 330 feet, as it turned out, it was inadequate to serve our house. You wanna have, for a typical single family house, about 10 gallons a minute, minute, I'm sorry. This was putting out one gallon a minute, so it simply wasn't gonna serve our needs for you know three bathrooms, two bathrooms, have washer, dryer, et cetera. So after drilling this, uh, and the advice of our well driller, we stopped where we were, capped it, and then started from scratch in a completely different location on our five acres where we were successful in finding six gallons a minute, which that was in July. It's now almost April 1st. We've been in the house since, since September, and that six gallons a minute has been completely adequate. We've never had a problem. But as a side note, you'll notice that well is still, that's well number one that ended up being not dry, but it didn't have a, a quick enough recovery rate, not to get too technical. It's got an eight inch pipe going down 330 feet into the earth. That eight inch pipe basically serves as a cistern to hold a lot of water. So we kept it, we didn't cap it and fill it with mud or rocks or cement. We kept it and actually had the well company put a pump down there because although the recovery rate is slow, it's got 300 gallons of water in there. And so once you use those 300 gallons, you just need 300 minutes for it to refill. That's not that long. It would never work to serve your house, but it's gonna work for what we're gonna use it for. And that is other than washing my cars and my mountain bikes, we're gonna have about a quarter acre of garden here. That well will serve to provide the water for that just fine. So it's not a complete waste. A good bit of advice to somebody building out in the sticks uh, outside of town in Montana. If you buy a piece of raw mountain land like we did and you're designing a house from scratch to put on it, drill your well first because that's going to tell you how much it's going to cost you and it's probably going to play into what your budget's going to be for building the rest of the house. If we had to do all over again, that pro well we did drill early but I probably would have drilled first. Then I would have known what, how much house or what kind of house we would want to build. But it worked out in the long run. So of course, one of your main concerns when you're building a new house anywhere, including in Northwest Montana, are your build costs. And we had the good fortune of having a builder that we'd worked with before, actually a friend of ours, who uh, permitted us to be very involved. By us, I mean my wife and I. So a couple of middle-aged people, we put a lot of sweat equity in this place by specifically, as you look, there's a lot of wood in this house. Every single piece of wood you see, the siding, the trim, the soffit, interior and exterior, my wife and I stained. We estimated that that saved us in the ballpark of $50,000 in original build costs. So if you can do it and you're willing to, it's kind of fun, not always fun, but it's, when it's all over and done, it's nice to know you save that money. So as far as being involved with the build, here on the back deck of our house, there's a couple examples of how my wife and I got involved and 
did what we think some cool things and actually saved us some money. Like for instance, I actually mounted almost all of the deck boards to the deck, which wasn't very difficult, but it was just out here primarily in most places, you're paying your builders by the hour. Those were hours that I didn't, didn't need to be given some guy 45 bucks an hour for. I could bend over and put the screws in these boards, and so we did. Also, I built the exterior doors. That's an outdoor shower there, That, but for the 8x8s eight that I had my builders mount, I built the rest of it. And we're kind of proud of the design that we came up with for the railing on the deck. Typically, a lot of people, what's real popular, especially in the mountain modern scene out here in northwest Montana, is do the cabling. We didn't really like that, so we came up with this idea. This is actually steel plumbing conduit with the brackets that we just picked up at a local hardware store, cut them to size, spray painted them, and our builders mounted them, and we actually really like the way that that turned out. Another really important issue that we came across and got really lucky on um, is internet access. When we were looking at the land, and it's so, it was so difficult to find land um, in the area we wanted to get out here in northwest Montana, outside of Whitefish and Columbia Falls, that we kind of raced into it, but loved the lot. We were under the we were under the understanding that we would have cable internet access. Well, after we began the build, we figured out not so much. We could get it, but it was going to cost us five to ten thousand dollars to run a line that was going to give us one to five meg down. I'm no technophile, but what that means is you literally couldn't even open a picture that you know, someone sent you. You couldn't shop on the internet. You couldn't do banking. So we were worried about that. Uh, we actually went with a satellite internet service, which shall go nameless, that I wouldn't recommend. Um, and you don't even have to think about it anymore in this area of the country because the Willy Wonka of our generation, Elon Musk, came up with that, Starlink, which saved our lives. So out of nowhere, when we actually were almost done building the house, we learned that Elon Musk was starting a satellite, global Saturn, satellite internet company called Starlink, a division of SpaceX, where you could sign up if you wanted to be invited. We signed up on a very simple website. Then I just get this invite email about two months down the road that says, if you want in, send us $550 and we might send you a dish. If not, don't complain. That's basically what it says. I couldn't uh, put that 550 bucks on my credit card faster. Two days later, a box about the size of a big pizza shows up on our front porch from the UPS guy. I unbox that, run it to the back deck, plug it in, it turns and rotates, makes a nice humming sound, hits the 58th parallel, and now we have 100 and greater meg down, meaning Netflix, YouTube, you know, anything, you know, banking, shopping, it, it's 99 bucks a month. I hope Elon sends me a piece of the action for this nice, uh, <laughs> for this nice nod I'm giving him, but if you're in this area of the country, that is very important because although we plan on dying here after what it took to build it, if we went to sell this place and all the people that are working remotely, if you don't have adequate internet speed at your house, I gotta imagine it's gonna be a lot tougher to sell or at least sell your house for what you wanna get for it. So no matter how hard you try, just if you're gonna be building a house, go into it knowing there's gonna be issues. Um, our major issue is you can see this beautiful oak flooring. Uh, this is flooring number two because this whole house is heated by in-floor heat actually. It's got radiant heating, water going through tubes that are, it's heated and runs through and the heat radiates up. It's really efficient and super warm and comfortable, but it's not so great when the tubes get punctured during the construction process and they start squirting water into your crawl space and ruining your floor. So. Uh, it was an unfortunate accident that we had to uh, deal with right when we were moving into the house after construction was complete, but it got dealt with. Um, we had a good builder work with us and we got through it and ended up having to pull floor number one and put in floor number two, which is now beautiful, but just know uh, the construction process is anything but perfect, so pack your patience. Another thing that the missus and I did 
she was more the taskmaster, to be honest with you, uh, is we built all these barn doors or these two barn doors ourselves. I say all these because every closet in the house is a barn door that we built. And we just sourced the lumber out of a local lumber mill. And my wife found this beautiful hardware at a local metal smith uh, down the road towards Kalispell. And, and we hung all these and built them in the garage. And I did have to recruit the strong neighbor kid to help carry this monster in, but it came out nice and probably saved us a thousand bucks at least, I would imagine. All right, so let's do a quick tour of the finished house. This is the living room. Uh, windows facing east. We get beautiful sunrises over the mountains, specifically Tea Kettle Mountain. That's a wood burner we love dearly. That thing works great. If I had to do over again, I still might. I wish I would have included a natural air vent to allow air from the outside come in so you're not burning or sending heated air out your chimney, but it still works pretty efficiently. Um, kitchen, obviously. There's the table that my wife and I built from a slab from the local lumber yard. Ordered the legs off of uh, where else but Amazon and uh, finished out with a custom stain we made and it came out pretty well. Again, all the Interior wood you're seeing, we stained ourselves, not the cabinets. They come ordered like that, but all the, the ceiling and the, the chair rail walls we did. This is the pantry, uh, bedrooms, guest bath. The uh, bedrooms, again, we built, uh, we customized or custom made our barn style closet doors. That's our we really loved including the exterior door to that bedroom as well, which we use as a workout slash yoga room, but it's nice having another egress because when you live in Montana, people like to come and visit you. So it's nice to give them another way to come in and go out. And going down towards the master suite, uh, first the mud room. Next to your garage in Montana, in my opinion, this is the most important room in your house. This is where you take the ski boots off. This is where you take your muddy mountain bike shoes, your hiking backpack, etc. So here's the master bedroom. Master bed that we built as well. Um, also east facing doors. Sunrise in the morning is a something we're really happy about the way we situated the house. And walk in, shared closet over a crawl space. And master bath one thing we really like about that radiant heating system is we have separate zones through the house this bathroom has its own zone so in the middle of winter we like to keep the house cool and run fires we keep it about 67 68 that bathroom is never never colder than 73 degrees which is great in the middle of the night especially in the winter so here we are out in the garage and something that we did in the last house we built as well is it's almost inevitable that your builder is going to have a lot of leftover materials. In this case, I'm talking about wood, wood siding, trim, etc. And at the first house, we were dumpster diving it and pulled out of the dumpster like say, hey, wait, wait, what are you doing with all that? That stuff's expensive. This one, we had them deliver, we set it aside. And what we do with it is then we then finish out the garage to make it more of a living space because we spend a lot of time out here but you know in montana you're waxing skis cleaning bikes you know fixing your chainsaw etc so it's kind of nice rather than sticking that in the burn pile to kind of dress up the garage and here the mechanical room i wanted to show you is where the heart and soul of the radiant heating system is this is the boiler that heats the water that goes to the tubes that warms the house it also heats the water for our hot water tank one mistake we made and this goes to the discussion about whether or not you should have your house reviewed by an architect or just use a uh, a draftsman that boiler although it's not very loud it's too loud to be attached to our master suite which it is so i'm probably going to be paying the extra this summer to have my hvac guy pull this boiler out and put it in the back of the garage because otherwise, and I may be crazy, it probably bothers me more than it bothers my wife, but I just don't want to hear that thing humming all night you know, when it kicks on to heat the water, etc. So 
something you might want to think about. It just would have been really easy to put it if it was on that where it's going to be while we'll never hear it. That's what we're going to end up doing. So after it's all said and done, uh, although it's not an easy experience building the house, it turned out. Um, amazingly enough, she still talks to me after building we're our second married. house. still married. For now, every day's a new day. <laughs> but we still have a lot of work to do. If uh, Will pans around, the site work still is going to be done this summer. We're going to be putting in our garden. You can see the stakes out there where Wendy's going to be putting her beehive. Um, I've got to build the woodshed, but that's a labor of love. The outside stuff we look forward to, and and that it's of no small consideration that even conservatively, and I'm pretty conservative, the place is worth a lot more than what we put in to build it as we stand here today. So that kind of takes a sting out of a lot of the bites. Thank you for watching our video. Please call, text, or email for more information. And don't forget to watch our other videos about Montana.